We had quite a, an adventure during lockdown because I discovered an old building because there's a sign up saying Dorset Hall. So eventually I got curious enough to go and have a look and I drove in and the building was surrounded by overfilled rubbish bins, looked in a pretty bad shape, the roof looked very sorry for itself and I thought I wonder what this building is and what I discovered it was actually a grade two listed building which means they've got legal duties to keep it in good repair and nobody was doing it. What I did was I got in touch with the housing association and the council both of whom were responsible for the building and it was very difficult because essentially as organizations often do with women or groups I was being blanked nobody was returning my calls I was just being ignored really try and get some people to do something about this building including I might add the local councillors on whose patch it was so I discovered that the building was a suffragette house it was a house of an important suffragette called Rose Lamartine Yates and a lot of suffragettes had come there when they were fighting for the vote so I had made documentaries before so I thought well let's get a guy with a drone so I did and I sent them pictures of their own roof and their own building and sent them to the local press. And, and what was the reaction to that? They answered my calls after that. <laughs> we have very few buildings mm. that were actually maintained and kept going that were important for suffragette movement. And here we are in 2022, mm. allowing one of the most important just to fall down. It actually made me realize that women's place in the world has still not gone that far that it's quite easy for organizations that are largely male driven to blankers and i was being blanked and eventually um it took at least 18 months the roof has now been repaired and we've got the national trust involved and we're looking for a future for the building to honour where it was in its political past. I built a team and I have very good people on my team, it's not just me. Um, and what we intend to do in the future is actually look out and find other buildings that are important to women, not just suffragettes, but places where women did great things. My name's Sarah Gould, I'm the Heritage Officer for London Borough of Merton um, and I'm responsible for two linked services, that's Merton Heritage Centre and Merton Local Study Centre that are both located at Morden Library at Merton Civic Centre and I'm responsible for helping to research, present and raise awareness of, of the heritage of the Borough of Merton. We think the original building was built around about 1709 for Edward Hubbard who was a yeoman farmer in Merton and Wimbledon then from um, 1906 onwards it was the home for Rose Lamartine Yates who was the organising secretary and the treasurer of the Wimbledon branch of the Women's Social and Political Union, that's the, the suffragettes, um, and she used the building really as a, a venue to support the women's suffrage campaign so that was staging all sorts of fundraising and promotional activity there. She took part in a deputation, a suffragette deputation in London um, to challenge the Prime Minister Herbert Asquith on why women's suffrage hadn't featured in the King's speech. Um, now as with a lot of those suffragette deputations it faced a very hostile reaction both from the police and, and various male onlookers um, and the women were verbally and physically abused but it was actually they that felt the, fo felt the full force of the law so Rose was actually arrested, um, charged with obstruction um, and she was sentenced to a month in Holloway prison. Um, Rose gave a, a sort of justification for her actions by um, saying that she, she wanted to, to sort of show her young son that she'd supported women suffering in case he sort of asked in later years what did you do to, to sort of support women's rights um, she felt she had to, to sort of um, stand her ground and make her voice heard. By 1910 she'd actually become organising secretary and treasurer of the local um, WSPU and Dorset Hall was then really um, heavily used as a, a campaign venue for, for women's suffrage locally so she, she continued to campaign both at Dorset Hall and locally and nationally to support the campaign for votes for women 
Um, in 1913, um, one of the other eminent suffragettes that Rose knew, Emily Wilding Davison, um, sadly died as a result of injuries sustained where she tried to pin a, a suffragette um, scarf to the bridle of the King's horse at the Epsom Derby. As soon as she was hit by the horse, Rose went down to the hospital where she was because she died four days later and decked her bedside with sashes and so on and then went on to organise an enormous funeral with 100,000 people in the streets. And the family also supported um, Emily Wilding Davison's um, family through the sort of inquest following her death. They were certainly friends. They were at Holloway together, University of Holloway. Mm. They studied together. They both spoke French because um, Emily was raised by, in a French household in mm -hmm. Greenwich, although she herself was English and Rose Yates was French by background. So I think that was a, quite a common link. Both of them were able to speak another language, not so common at that time. Um, and they both went to university together, Holloway and then studied at Oxford. So Barbara, what's the significance of the sash for Emily? She obviously wanted to be in Parliament with everybody else. She wanted to be able to make legislation to make life better for people. All the suffragettes were great social reformers. They weren't simply people, shall we say, who wanted the vote for the vote's sake. They realized without the vote, they had no power. And that's why the sashes were significant. Mm -hmm. How did you come across the sash? Well, it was bought in Sotheby's in the mid nineties, mid mm -hmm. to late nineties. And the reason my late husband actually bought it for me was because at the time I was, I started actually bringing a case against the government with the sex discrimination number two bill because twice I'd actually been forbidden to buy a drink in men's clubs. One was a golf club and one was uh, the Carlton Club in London, which was all male. So I thought, well, this can't be right. What's the legislation? So. Having originally trained as a lawyer, I actually uh, started seeing how we could fix the bill, which was the Sex Discrimination Act of 1975. So that's how I got it. My late husband bought it as a gift to keep me going. But she certainly drove me on working, if you like, on women's rights and political action and so on. Absolutely. Trying not to take no for an answer when something was right. So having spent all that time campaigning to clear Emily's name, how does it make you feel when you stand here today and look at the sash? I'm in awe of the suffragettes mm. and what they did. Mm. Not just the sash, but all the women completely in awe. Mm. And any woman looking at this would say that these women actually went into prison to fight for other women, were then force-fed when they went on hunger strike, mm -hmm. they had tubes pushed up their noses with a kind of mixture of bovril and drugs to subdue them. They became terribly ill and some of them died. Mm -hmm. And this is only just over a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It has a great presence. It does, indeed. But I thought it was quite fitting that she came into Westminster so that people are reminded what great sacrifices these women made so that we could be free. You're absolutely right, Barbara. Without my team, nobody would have known it existed mm. or that she existed. And she hasn't been recognised. We did try to get her recognised and a plaque put on the outside of the building, something called the Blue Plaque Scheme in the UK. but. The people who governed that decided she wasn't important enough. <laughs> Shocking. So our next steps, my team, we're actually going to put together our own plaque scheme, working with Mapping Women's Suffrage, to make sure that these women are recognised. That's my next step. <laughs>